Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also want to thank each of you for, for being here uh, and all those who sit behind you and all those that you represent uh, who are our veterans' best advocates. And I especially want to thank those from Texas. And I want to let you know that we've heard you uh, about seeking greater representation uh, for Texas on this committee. And I want to announce that we've doubled the size of Texans serving on this committee now with uh, Mr. Arrington uh, on, on the other side from Lubbock, who chose to be on this committee and already has hit the ground running and has become an excellent partner for us in the work that we're trying to do. Uh, when I walked in, I heard Mr. Rowan talking about uh, mental health access for those veterans with other than honorable uh, discharges. I want to say that that groundbreaking announcement from Secretary Shulkin uh, earlier this week, his announcement that they were going to forego building their own IT system and were going to purchase a commercial off-the-shelf system, those very positive changes would not have happened without the pressure and advocacy and the guidance and the direction that you have provided. So I want to thank you for that. It wouldn't have happened through, through our work alone, certainly. It really uh, originated and, and was made possible because of you. Secretary McDonald had a 12-point program for VA turnaround. Uh, my suggestion to Secretary Shulkin is that we make it a 13-point program, and point number one is reducing veteran suicide. You spoke about the other than honorable discharge access to mental health care access. I had a chance to visit one of our wonderful vet centers in Laredo, Texas, with Vietnam-era veterans who said they preferred those vet centers and the group therapy and just discussions they were able to have there uh, as being critical to their well-being. Uh, Mr. Rowan, I want to ask you, because we know of the, the estimate, which has to be a conservative one, that, that 20 veterans a day are taking their lives in this country. The single biggest cohort are Vietnam-era veterans. Beyond the vet centers, beyond mental health care access, what, what are we not doing that you want us to focus on? Well, I, I think that one of the things we need to be concerned about is outreach. Um, when we talked about veteran suicide, it was always thought about as the younger veterans. They didn't realize it was predominantly older veterans. Yeah, Vietnam veterans. Vietnam veterans who are still struggling after all these years. Or as the uh, workaholics retire, they, they have something to start thinking about that they had shoved in a closet 50 years earlier. So I think outreach could be useful, uh, certainly. Um, I also think I'd be curious to know and have some people start to take a look at this whole issue with pain management and opioid use. I mean, I can tell you that I always tell people I knew more people who died after the war than in the war in the, in the neighborhood I grew up in in New York City. And a significant portion of them were heroin overdoses. And while, you know, they say, oh, they overdosed in heroin, my feeling is they didn't do just overdose in heroin. They killed themselves with heroin because it was easier than putting, pulling a trigger on a gun, just shoot themselves with enough heroin to kill them. Uh, you know, it, so I think that's going on again today. We're seeing that again. So, you know, what? it's really easy to pop 40 oxycodones and just go up, out and, you know, forget it, uh, especially when you're dealing with stuff that you had thought you had dealt with 50 years earlier and it's come back to haunt you. So I think that there's some correlation there between this whole overuse of, of opioids, et cetera. Um, so, and I, I still find it amazing how cheap heroin is today. Thank you for your work on this. I'm going to yield back because I'm out of time to the chairman. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for yielding. Mr. Arrington.